they had a vote to, uh, to discuss whether or not they're going to extend the lockdown. We all know about that. Now, let me give you something very important that actually most people don't even know. They voted secretively. They did not record the vote. And the amendment that the only MPP, independent MPP, Randy Hillier, tried to put an amendment into, the, uh, into that uh, statue to allow transparency. That we actually will have an opportunity to ask our government, why are you doing these measures? Please show us real data and science behind justifications for these unnecessary measures. Guess what happened? They voted that down. And there, and there was not recorded vote. So we can't even hold accountable the people that didn't want to be transparent with us and do want to be held accountable. What kind of democracy is that? Wow. Yeah. Please understand. When those people, those people calling us irresponsible, those people calling us not having integrity, those people need to look in the mirror. Yeah. Yes or yes? Yes. This government will resign over the atrocious measures they were taking. People are dying because the surges are canceled. Again, over 52,000 necessary medical procedures were canceled right away as soon as the emergency order went into place. Extra 12,000 procedures every single week were added to that. We're talking about cancer surgeries. We're talking about heart disease. We're talking about screening for different uh, health issues. People coming to me, people sending me messages like, like, like to Randy Healer that they're crying, they're actually dying because they're not able to get proper medical help because of the, uh, the cre they're creating over 10,000 beds, the hospitals are empty, and there's no surge. In the whole province of Ontario, of over 50, almost 50 million people, we don't even have a thousand people in the hospital with this virus. What a disaster is this? Amazing, like, it's a hoax. It's, a it's, it's, it's crazy, like, I'm speechless when thinking about it. So this is what we need to do, guys. Today, is we're celebrating the life. We're going to be back at the parliament every time they're going to be sitting. So they're skipping the sitting, right they're skipping yes. the sitting this week. So we'll be back the following week, making sure that they can hear us. Yes. This is what we all must do. Every single person here, I can't see the Colin, but Colin created a, a mailing list and a letter that we all have to flood the, all the MPPs, guys. The email, they don't even going to look at it. They're not going to open. We all must have a mail campaign. We need to have thousands and thousands of letters going to all the MPPs and the federal government expressing our disgust yes. over this disaster that created in this company. Yeah. 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 The government wants to blame COVID for economic atrocities that's happening right now in our country. The government doesn't want to take responsibility for collateral deaths. The government doesn't want to take responsibility for economic disaster that's being created now. In Canada, we now have over 13% unemployment rate. Are you kidding me? Like, come on. This is so dangerous. The economic ramifications will leap into the social and, and life issues. People committing suicide, people are depressed, people's lives are completely being destroyed. And they're still thinking about opening small businesses. All small businesses must open now. Please understand, and I'm, I'm going to give Chris to talk about the small businesses, but we want to have a network, not just the businesses that want to open, the, the network of businesses that are going to open with normal life. Because having 25% capacity requirements so you can do social distancing BS, that's not going to save any business. All that's going to do is going to give you false hope, so then you're going to be suffocated later anyway. And we're not going to allow that to happen. Right. Here, here. Enough is enough. 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 enough, is enough. Love you all. Stay healthy. You're scared. Yeah. That's Vlad, everybody. Hugs over masks. Hugs over masks. I'd like to say a few words before I invite everybody's favorite, Chris Skye, up to the microphone Woo! to talk about his Back to Work initiative. First of all, words. Words are the most important part of any civilization because it's the words that we use that define the laws that keep the peace among such a vast, vast array of different people. We all belong to the same collective, but we are very different people with different beliefs, different ideas, and this is what makes a democracy. If you don't have different ideas, you don't have a democracy. So, and without that being represented in the House of Parliament, we don't have a voice. Our Parliament needs to sit every single day of the week. Using anything as an excuse not to sit is an abdication of democracy. Yeah, yeah. We are here together to celebrate our democracy, to defend our democracy, and to stand up for our rights. Why? Because enough is enough! Enough is enough! Enough is enough! Enough is enough! enough, is enough. enough, is enough. enough.
And with that, I'd like to invite Chris Skye up to the microphone. Hey guys. Go Chris. I'm really proud of you all today. Yes. All week, the government's been putting these rumors online, trying to scare people, telling them there's going to be riots, trying to form division amongst race, amongst party lines, any which way they can. Everybody that showed up here proved them wrong, proved that they're just as hollow and phony as we all knew they were. So I just want everybody to give themselves a round of applause because nobody would even know. I just want to spend like one minute talking about Fearless. The reason I joined with Fearless Ontario is because we were getting public support from the sitting MPP, so he needed an organization to support. This made the mainstream media finally acknowledge us and not acknowledge us as some fringe group, some group of racists or white supremacists. No, they have to acknowledge us as a group of Canadians that know there's something wrong going on and are gonna fix it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Randy's amendment might have got shot down, and it got shot down in a way that just exposed the government even more for what they are. A secret vote, so you wouldn't know who voted against the government wanting to be able for you to find out why they're extending our lockdown? That's what they did. That's what they did. So now we're up to June 30th. What was Trudeau's response to this extended lockdown that we have to suffer because Fuck it's Trudeau! so dangerous that COVID's gonna spread and people are gonna die? Did you guys see Trudeau's latest photo up? Yeah. What, what was he doing? Bending the knee. Bending the knee. Like a little bit. Surrounded. Surrounded by more people than are here today. But what did the media say? They actually said this, and in fact, there's actually a letter signed by 1,200 so-called health professionals that have gone out to all world governments because everybody's obviously raising questions. If COVID is so dangerous, how could we have these mass protests with no problems, no fallout, no ri ridiculous spikes, no deaths? Oh, guess what the health professionals say? Social distancing for those protests is not required because COVID is not as large of a public health threat as so-called white supremacism. <laughs> I am not joking. And I have the PDF of the letter signed by all 1,200 so-called professionals if you want to read it. They want to kill and all those black further. people and sympathize with COVID? It doesn't stop there. Is it bullshit? There's more, exactly. <laughs> the, they, the next thing they do is single out anti-lockdown protests and say, these, on the other hand, are rooted in nothing but white supremacy and should be declared illegal. Liar! I look around, I don't see white people everywhere. I see Canadians everywhere. All ages, all ethnicities, from every country around the world. Our protest here is a representation of Canada. This is Canada on a plate. And that's what scares them. Apparently this is better. Is that better for everyone? <laughs> the point of all that was, we now have public recognition. They can't ostracize us. They have to recognize us. Doug Ford had to acknowledge us on mainstream media. He is on the defensive. He had to try to he had to try to combat Randy. He had to try to combat us. His approval was over 70% at the height of this in April. Now it's under 30%. Yeah! Yeah! I am proud to report that Doug Ford has the lowest approval rating yeah! of any premier yeah! in all of Canada. Yeah! And I have to tell you, Doug, it's the first title that I think you truly deserve. Yeah, yeah. Lied about killing so now, gender garbage in schools. They tell you June 30th. I hate to say I told you so, but we have me on video multiple times telling you so that they are going to extend your lockdown. They are not going to give you justification or cause. 
and they are going to call you irresponsible or racist or anything okay. else they can to ostracize you if you disagree. Yes. They use the phasing system as a way to try to stall things. But thanks to efforts like ours, we put so much pressure on them that that wasn't fast, that wasn't working. That wasn't working. So now what are they doing? They told you, they're giving you false hope. First of all, they ran an article yesterday saying restaurants should prepare to open. <laughs> yeah, look at the actual meat of the article. What date should they be ready to open by? <laughs> Sorry, I, I don't have that data available. <laughs> Yeah. Just making it up as they that go The guidelines are written by, it looks like they were written by somebody in fourth grade. <laughs> After they ate, I don't even want to get there, but anyway. <laughs> the guidelines are written in a way specifically to make the business non-viable for the tenant. For, in fact, our social distancing rule of two meters, where the hell did it come from? Does anybody even know? Anyone in the crowd? Shout it out. Well, if you want to know, the WHO official social distance rule for COVID is one meter. That's three feet, 3.2 feet to be exact. That's what they're going by in all of Europe right now. Three feet for social distancing. So think about a restaurant where the tables are already two, two and a half feet apart. You got to move it another six inches. That's okay. That's an acceptable guideline. People can follow that. People can survive. People can make money. But what are they doing here? Six feet. Six feet between the tables, really? Really? For a, for a customer that's stationary, not even moving, they have to be six feet away. That makes virtually every restaurant non-viable. Do you think that's an accident? Do you think they don't know this? No, it's intentional. Just like the lockdown extension, they told you it was gonna be 